It is still in the summertime, guys, which means summer drinks, which also means summer get-togethers, summer parties, pool parties. And when those are around, that usually means more summer drinks. More uh, specifically, cocktails. Uh, and these, uh, what we're going to talk about today is cocktail drinks with only two ingredients. Simple cocktail mixes with only two ingredients. Something simple, something fast, something to please the guests when they come over, whenever it is you're doing your whole summer shebang thing. More on that right after this. Like I said, guys, this is going to be cocktail mixes with only two ingredients to make super fast, super simple. Just like this video, there are 40 different kinds of mixes, cocktail mixes that we're going to be talking about. So uh, we're going to run this through as fast as possible because, again, there's like 40 of them, 40 of these fucking cocktail drinks. Yeah, this one's going to go out to the those cocktail mixers, the mixologists, uh, whatever it is that you guys consider yourselves. Uh, leave it in the comments. What do you what do you consider yourself? Mixologists, uh, cocktail mixers, cocktail drinkers, magicians. I don't know. Put it in the comments. And what do you say we jump right into the very first one in this uh, top 40, not top, but just the list of 40 cocktail mixed drinks. Let's go ahead and start with the first one. So yeah, you can see right here on our screen, we are uh, looking at the gin and tonic. Very, very simple. In fact, the two ingredients are in the name. Gin uh, and tonic. Some uh, bubbly water. Uh, you can also add some limes in there. Some uh, mint leaves just to give it some more zest. More flavor, some more zest. So uh, that's pretty uh, the most simplest one. And that's the first one here on the list. Uh, there's, like I mentioned in the past podcast, I'll go ahead and leave a link to that. Uh, gin drinkers just so happen uh, to be considered very successful people. So you make gin and tonics at your summer uh, pool party or whatever. It's probably going to be a banger. Now let's move right on to number two of the top 40 uh, cocktail mixes. And here we got what is called the Greyhound. As you can see, it already looks like, uh, like a, some sort of uh half and half or tea of some sort half and half being the half tea half lemonade for those who don't know uh the name uh not to be confused with the greyhound bus station but uh simply to put it simple this drink consists of uh whether gin or vodka whichever you prefer and a little bit of grapefruit juice or you can just go ahead and just throw in both vodka and tequila with the grape juice just to give it a bigger bigger much bigger kick i mean uh if you you know if you're like me I, I like a huge kick in my drinks uh so that's the two ingredients for the the greyhound once again this one's called the greyhound it's uh like i mentioned it it looks really it looks really refreshing it looks like something that uh you would like to be drinking to cool off after just being cooled off after getting on a pool and right back into this uh, 110 degree Laredo, Texas weather. <laughs> Am I right? For those of you watching uh, from Laredo, let's move right on to number three. I'm probably going to lose count. So uh, let's move on to the next one. And next here is the Martini. Uh, very nice uh, looking picture also, by the way. Uh, so this mofo consists of either gin or vodka i have a feeling this is going to be one of like the two main uh liqueurs that are going to be used in all of these drinks just have a feeling so it's either gin vodka and vermouth so apparently the secret to making the perfect martini is by using double the amount of liquor more than the vermouth so basically when you make a martini you're basically making something that's really going to make you forget about your day's problem <laughs> by the sounds of But I mean, you know, we all have those kind of days, right? I mean, I, I, I get it. I get it. Sometimes you need one of those uh, drinks to help you just relax and make you just say, fuck it. Now, let's move on to the next one. This one is not to be mistaken for like a Pepsi or a Coke. Uh, leave it in the comments uh, what did you think when you see this? What would you think when you see this? Pepsi or Coke or something with a flavor? Because there's, there's dark cherry Coke, stuff like that. So this one is called the Black 
Russian. Now, this one consists of Kahlua, which is the 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 liqueur, not liquor, liqueur that that tastes like coffee and vodka. Sometimes this drink apparently goes by the name of old fashioned. You pour this uh, Kahlua and vodka into a really nice looking glass with a little bit of rocks in it. And uh, you got yourself again, what is called the, the black Russian and or uh, old fashioned, depending on your mood right i guess uh but that's one that's another one i mean and uh again not to be mistaken or soda or pop or however you however you call it wherever it is you're from and now with that let's move on to the next one this one sounds even much more slim simpler i mean than i mean it's in the name uh it's a freaking vodka soda it's uh vodka obviously with uh some uh club soda mineral water I mean, it can't get any simpler than that. Uh, the way to really give it more flavor, because I mean, vodka itself is, uh, it's uh, its not very uh, pleasant unless you're drinking some flavored vodka. Um, you can also just add flavored vodka into that as well as uh, to quite possibly all the other ones I just mentioned, uh, depending on your uh uh, taste or your preference uh, but yeah if you're not going to be using flavored vodka on this one guys uh, you can probably uh, just like in the picture just throw in some uh, some lemons in there and whatever kind of like uh, some of those uh, mint leaves that we just uh, saw not too long ago to give it some more pizzazz and uh, just to really give it some aesthetic look to it right I mean if you're that kind of person or that kind of cocktail mixer or mixologist or whatever you consider yourself like to just uh, not just serve the drink but also have a nice look to it you can also do that and um, that's that's it for this drink let's move on to the next one this one here is a vodka tonic once again it's in the name vodka and tonic water the difference between the club soda and the tonic water tonic water has a little bit more sweetness to it so uh this one is already going to have uh again a little bit of sweetness so you can use regular vodka or you can just add the uh, flavored vodka just for extra flavor extra sweetness uh again it's all personal preference but uh yeah this one definitely is again these are all going to be simple these are all two uh, ingredients uh, let me know in the comments so far which one is looking very more uh, tempting for you. Leave it in the comments. Uh, I, I lost count so far, but uh, we've got a few more to go. So let's move on to the next one. If you are a, a Big Bang Theory fan, you will be very familiar with the Cuba Libre. If you, uh, again, if you are a Big Bang Theory fan, the show, I mean, you will get this reference. The Cuba Libre. Uh, it's uh, in the show was asked, uh, can I have a Cuba Libre? But uh, shit. Okay, so it's been a while since I've seen the damn show. Uh, I'll admit. But basically, it ends up just uh, being ordered with just the Coke. So I ruined the joke. I am sorry. So the drink itself is just rum and Coke. That is all it is. And the way that it is presented in this picture that you see here, uh, a lot of limes and a lot of ice and some again some mint leaves possible mint leaves it looks like mint leaves in the picture but uh yeah it's all about the aestheticness but also affects the flavor if you're not a huge fan of just rum once again you can add all of this uh just to you know not only for the look but for the flavor it's um it's a pretty it's a pretty popular one i think i've been hearing it uh, here and there uh not just in the big bad theory show i can definitely have one of these i'm not a big coke drinker but uh i, I can definitely have one of these it, it's it's already looking refreshing not gonna lie and now with that let's move on to the next one here we have a mimosa so you can have this drink the night that you guys uh, you and your friends or family are having a drink together or if you happen to wake up one of, one of those mornings after having a little few too much with a little bit of a headache you can actually have a mimosa to help calm that down it's a uh, it's a remedy where you uh, you wake up with a hangover and you have just a little bit of more alcohol just to counter it me personally i've never tried that before but uh if you guys have please leave it in the comments does that remedy even work like for reals for reals i've never tried but anyways uh, so the mimosa consists of champagne and orange juice. It definitely does look like something you will have for breakfast. That is for damn sure. It looks, it just looks like freaking OJ. And if you've ever tried a mimosa, it 
taste like freaking OJ. Like it's it's insane. It's it's really really tasty. It's really really good. Uh, not entirely sure what type of champagne that you uh, is supposed to be used in here, but I can only assume that uh, the champagne will be really up to the drinker, as in you. Uh, more pr like I'm assuming, like right off the bat, not something dry. I know that I'm not a big wine guy, but I know that red wine. Uh, a dry red wine will not work with this not only that but it will not give it uh, the color either so it has to be something clear it has something sweet sweet uh, champagne so that's that's really all I know as, as, as far as specific kind of champagne I'm not entirely sure uh, if you guys do know leave it in the comments right down below uh, and with that let's move on to the next one this one here is called and I'm sorry if I'm gonna mispronounce this right here Beleni Bellini, not entirely sh entirely sure. Uh, leave it in the comments if you guys know what this drink is and what is how it's actually pronounced, and if you've ever tried it, leave it in the comments. Uh, so this one, uh, it looks real nice. It looks it looks like champagne, but at the same time, it looks like OJ. Okay, so this uh drink here, uh, it consists of fresh peaches, like the peach juice. I I assume we're gonna be. And for this one, I mean, we're, it involves some uh, a juicer or some sort or uh, something along those lines. And it also consists of uh, Prosecco. To be quite honest with you, not entirely sure what a Prosecco is. If I can uh, find out what that is, I'll go ahead and put it somewhere on uh, here. So you guys can have a really much better idea and so that I can know because I don't, I don't think I've ever heard that. I might have. I'm horrible at names. But if I see the bottle, I'm going to be like, oh, okay. That's what it was talking. So pure peach and prosecco and whatever that may be. But I mean the peach part. I, I like peaches. I'm a big uh, peach guy. I'm not a big peach guy, but I I enjoy fruit is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, the the drink looks real real good. It definitely gives me some summery vibe. Looking good. Sounds good. I would try it. I would try them all. I've tried most or some. I haven't gone down the entire list yet. But we should. Let's move on. This one here is under. Kir, K I R. That's literally what this drink is called. Me personally, I've never heard of it before, but I mean, it looks like just—it looks like a, just someone just poured champagne to a cup. That's what it looks like. Let's see what it consists of. So it's got some white wine. This one actually says that it, it's preferably dry white white wine. So already off to a very interesting start. And it also consists of creme de cassis and in uh, apostrophes black currant liqueur or liqueur. Uh, once again, I'm not uh, familiar with the with that second one. If I find it, I will put it somewhere here so you and I can know exactly what it is that this consists of. But the drink itself, I like the presentation. Like I said, it like I was right about the wine thing, though. It is uh, white wine. It's dry white wine. So uh, as soon as I find out what that uh, that creme de cassis or cases, however that's pronounced, is, I will get a much more better understanding of what or what is to be expected of this drink. But I mean, again, as far as presentation wise, it's uh, it's definitely fancy. It's something that will probably catch the ladies' eyes. Uh, I would just, I would like to just, you know, have a sip. That, that's usually what I do whenever my wife orders something. I would, I would try it out because I just have to. It's just, just who I am. Moving on to the next one. This one here is also under Kir, K I R, but this one has the word royal next to it so i can only what just not even looking at anything right now just assuming that it's also going to consist of white dry wine and possibly i don't i don't know what what's going to make it royal but uh, uh let's, let's find out so the difference between the regular cur and the royal cur is that it does still consist of the creme de cassis or cases. So, sorry about that. But instead of putting in a dry wine, what you want to want to go ahead and do for this one is put in some champagne. So I guess the royal part of this is the fact that it's just bubblier, maybe. Because I know dry wine, again, not only has it a very bitter, bitter as dry uh, kick to it, but it's also not bubbly champagne on the other hand much more refreshing bubblier crispy and has possibly better 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 taste to it than something that's dry i think i will go for more of the the royal cur than the regular cur just because uh it this the royal does not have 
a dry wine. I'm not a big fan of dry wine. So this will probably be something I would actually order for myself and the wife as well. Uh, you know, this looks like something I would actually like drinking by a pool. Yeah, th this definitely gives the, the, the summer vibes more than the, the regular cur. But uh, now that now that we talked about that one, let's go ahead and move on to the next. The wine spritzer. I talked about spritzers uh, again in the some podcast. Uh, the link will be in the description. Uh, this one, uh, if I can only remember what the spritz was. Spritz was its own thing, if I remember correctly. Uh, but for this one, this one does have the wine. I think it was wine. Yes, it's red wine, red wine spritzer, as well as white wine spritzer. So it's basically a combination of uh, two kinds of wines, white and red uh, spritzer. So I, uh, this one to me sounds just a little bit lazy because it's just like it's literally the same kind of uh, wine, just a little uh, different flavors that's the only thing uh two different kinds of flavored wines in one cup with some ice and by the looks of it uh looks like orange and or lime uh the presentation looks sick especially on this tray that you can see right here uh it does look refreshing not gonna lie the the again the presentation uh, when you present something, uh, when it comes to a drink here, and you make it look nice, make it look, you know, not just professional, I guess, looking, it really does, uh, it really gets into the mind and makes you think like, oh, this looks, this looks worth my time, right? But now let's move on to the next one. This one's got a badass name for something that looks very nice and pleasant. The name of this drink is called the Rusty Nail. Pretty freaking hardcore. Now, let's see what it actually consists of. Let's see what makes it hardcore. So the Rusty Nail here consists of scotch, which uh, scotch, for those who do not know, is uh, a lot more, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot bit heavier, I think, my opinion, than your typical whiskey. So... Uh, uh, drink with caution, I guess. And it's scotch. Uh, does not specify what kind of scotch. I can assume it's as long as it's a. It, I get, it's per personal preference, I assume. And it also consists of drum drum buoy drum drum by by. I will leave the damn name underneath somewhere here because apparently I can't read. And also, I'm not very familiar with that second uh ingredient. And I will also put up picture or clip somewhere here so you can. You and I, I mean, can uh, again, once again, understand how this uh, how this works, how this will. Uh, yeah, how this is made. I mean, yeah, but this drink definitely looks again. Not only is the name badass, the rusty nail. I would get that just to sound cool and look cool while drinking it. How would this taste? Maybe it would make me feel like a gentleman, make me feel like a like a real man. Maybe my my locks will fall off or something. I don't know. But uh, I would definitely try it again just because of the name. The name sounds sick. So uh, this is definitely it looks summery. I think the only reason why it looks summery is because of that uh, of that lime uh, wedge, that lime wedge that's, that's uh, thrown in there. It does give it a nice presentation as far as flavor wise. Uh, I don't know. I will I will try it. I'm a I'm a whiskey bourbon guy. Not uh i haven't tried the right scotch uh but i would try it hell yeah and uh let's move on let's let's uh kick this rusty nail off away somewhere where we won't flatten a tire and and move on shall we and speaking of badass names this one is probably right up there with rusty nail the name of this drink is called the godfather for those of you who enjoy the godfather movies or any kind of scarface uh, Al Pacino movies of any kind, this drink will probably catch your attention just because of the name. The way that it's presented here looks, it definitely looks like something that somebody who I'm asking for a favor to, to kill or uh, get rid of somebody for me would be drinking. So it's got that going for it. So this one also consists of scotch whiskey. Uh, once again, does not specify as uh, it's just like your personal preference of scotch. And it also consists of amaretto liquor. Uh, amaretto is uh, much, it's more of a flavor. It does have alcohol in it, but it's a very sweet, almost like very sugary, not caramelly, but it, it's a very, very uh, good uh, liquor. So this one, I think now that I'm actually thinking about it, I have, have had before and I, I have to give a shout out to my good buddy Julius. I, If I'm not mistaken, he was the one that prepped me a few because uh, 
I actually really like this drink. Uh, if this is the one that I'm thinking about, uh, then I do like this one a lot. So, uh, yeah, uh, shout out to Julius. Uh, this one uh, does not give me a lot of uh, summer vibe. Uh, al although the way it's presented here again, it does look something that that'll be that will be passed around at a at a bar somewhere by a pool. So you know what? Yeah, I take that back. Yeah, I I, I do get that. And now let's move on to the next one. This one once again, it's one of those drinks that just has both ingredients in the name. It's a uh, scotch and soda again your preference of scotch with a little bit of club soda or more uh scotch than soda or soda scotch depending how much you put of what and again presentation wise in this picture definitely it looks like it looks like goddamn lemonade uh, uh probably a lot more stronger than uh, uh all the other drinks that we mentioned that involve uh club soda for the fact that it's scotch and and uh, far, as far as in my experience when it comes to scotch they uh they're they're a little heavy I'm not gonna lie flavor wise uh kick wise everything about scotch as far as what the ones i've tried it's an acquired taste it's an acquired taste but uh here you're um uh, not drowning but um uh, diluting the scotch just a little bit uh, you can probably even throw in some ice in there and again uh some uh and like like it's done here in the picture with a lemon wedge again just for the look just for the aestheticness and um i mean it looks good my mouth is worrying a little bit on that one and now let's move on shall we this one looks like a damn seasonal drink and by seasonal i do mean something along the lines of christmas and only because of those cherry looking thing i think it's cherry it's like it's some sort of black cherry of some sort also kind of reminds me of a cherry limeade a little bit of the combination of the the fruits that uh, that are going on there this one is called the cape cod a little interesting name uh you know I, I don't name these guys I, I i just know i just find out about it. so basically what this drink is is vodka and cranberry juice and as you see here as it's presented uh with a ton of ice to really dilute some of that vodka because uh vodka it's not for the faint of heart vodka could be whether your friend or your enemy really it just depends how you treat it and dress it up a little bit just like they're doing it here with again what looks to me some sort of black cherries some lime and uh just uh you can you can even call it the the cherry limeade just to you know i don't know again i don't name these guys it is referred to a cranberry vodka which is basically calling out what its you know, its ingredients. But uh, if you do want to, you do want to sound fancy, you can go ahead and just give call it by its. I don't know if its actual name is, but it, this name is Cape Cod. Uh, so there's that. It's refreshing looking. Again, it looks like a cherry limeade. I would have one or two just because it looks like it's gonna taste amazing. I, I like uh, cranberry juice. I enjoy me some vodka. So this is this will be one of the ones I would have. Now let's move right on. This one here is called a traditional gimlet. That second part of the name is a little bit funny. I think of uh, I'm not even gonna <clears throat> let's go low. Let's, let's move along. A little bit of history on the the gimlet uh this drink take dates back to the 19th century so this drink has been this drink has seen some shit like if this drink could talk it could tell you some fucking stories so this traditional gimlet consists of lime juice and gin apparently uh, there's a legend on this drink that says that this drink was served to sailors and it was served to them and just called it lime juice so you can only uh imagine how many drunken sailors there were back then so uh, you know scallywags so again gin and lime juice this is basically it's basically a, a lemonade with gin and when there's a summer pool vacation whatever kind of party there's bound to be lemonade and if there's lemonade there's quite possibly going to be gin in it especially if the person throwing this uh event is a cocktail drinker and mixer so there's that so the traditional gimlet gin lime juice simple straight to the point let's move on to the next one this one is one of those drinks that just looks like something you'll have for breakfast it looks like goddamn oj this one also has one of those badass names it goes by screwdriver now the two ingredients to make a screwdriver is vodka and you guessed it oj i have had a few screwdrivers over you know over the years i've been uh 
experimenting and tasting different kinds of drinks and cocktails you know oh geez everywhere you know you can you can get it absolutely everywhere just pour in some vodka in there and you know screw drive your brains out so the screwdriver by the looks of it as you can see in the picture keeps it in the realm of that citrusy refreshing juice looking kind of uh, cocktail beverage so yeah definitely one of those drinks that you would enjoy having in the summer again by a pool or just uh, just sipping on 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 your your eggs toast and and chicken waffles or some shit but now that we're done with the screwdriver let's go ahead and screw ourselves to the next one <laughs> this here uh blue moon looking mofo is called a shandy now as you can see by the bottle right behind it we're not very far off or i was not very far off when i said this looks like a like a blue moon with blue moon being a a type of uh, brand of beer so this shandy consists of beer and lemon lime soda now for this drink it does specify uh it you can either use a pale ale or a lager now i wonder if it's ever been done with an ipa and i can only assume that an ipa would also work because ipas uh have a lot of flavors and very uh fruity flavors so i think uh ipa would also work my opinion my personal opinion because it would all uh, it would go uh very well with a, what is the the lemon lime soda uh lemon lime soda with already fruitness fruitiness of an ipa but in this in this uh original i guess we can call it uh recipe it is a uh, pale ale and or uh laggers so again this one's the shandy i'm pro i might have myself one later on because now that i'm looking at it i do crave one and uh yeah it looks good this is more than likely something i would have in the summer today more than likely let's move on shall we this is one of those drinks that i know i've had once or twice in my life and i just said to myself um uh, don't ever fucking do that again so as you can see just by looking at the picture uh it it it's basically showing you what it is it's not even mixed in a cup it's literally just showing you the ingredients it's a vodka and red bull and it is what it is vodka red bull it's they just they didn't go creative on this they're just they're just like vodka and red bull basically saying you're gonna die or you're gonna have a heart attack plain and simple like i said i've had uh i've had this version i've had the one that comes with the jaeger jaeger and uh uh red bull Ooh, man the party kept going i will tell you that but uh damn my uh my heart was racing it was racing because oh, because the red bull gave me wings so this is one that i will like i said i will i will probably not have again like nah man no but you know uh for to some this might be tempting this this is like something you know it's like a go-to or it's just something that you like to have a sip of every now and again you know kudos to you uh but uh, I, I tend to stay away from anything that uh, involves alcohol and uh, energy drinks. I mean, I mean, tweets your own, drink responsibly. Uh, but there it is. That's the that is the vodka Red Bull. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get the hell out of here. And move on to the next. Back to a uh, seasonal looking kind of cocktail drink. This one is pretty pretty dead on. It's called the peppermint hot chocolate. And the way that it's presented here just screams ho ho ho. The Santa, not ho. So this one consists of this one's this one's interesting. This one is peppermint vodka, and this one has Smirnoff peppermint whisk and you can toss in your favorite chocolate and then uh i guess it really depends on you if you want to warm this thing up or not uh I, again this is personal preference but that is what does this consist of peppermint vodka and sm uh smirnoff uh peppermint twist is this one's a bit more specific and uh very seasonal especially the whole smirnoff peppermint twist i do not see a lot of that so i'm assuming again this is seasonal this is something you have to kind of sort of wait for when it comes to the ingredients uh but uh now now that i know this is definitely something that i gotta uh try out for myself for uh this coming uh holidays so if i remember uh i will definitely you know i will definitely review the shit out of this i i am intrigued 
with this one uh as far as the chocolate again could this be considered uh three ingredients it's hot chocolate it's in the name but uh no whatever two or three put in the comments let's move on shall we i know all you see is a bottle of malibu for those who are not familiar it's a coconut uh flavored rum uh but this one is probably the most simplest and i've had a a few not in exactly this a couple days ago a couple days ago i believe it was like two or three days ago prior to recording this video was uh national pina colada day so uh we did have a couple of these not again not exactly like this because uh, pina colada consists of more uh this one is called the malibu and pineapple and it's one of those it's in the name malibu uh malibu coconut rum with pineapple juice uh those two mixes itself already ha you're already halfway to making the pina colada but if you're just like you know you're, you're in a rush or you're just feeling you're feeling the lazies then you know just put uh, the malibu into pineapple juice uh some ice in there maybe put a little fancy little uh, umbrella on, on top of that and you're good to go bro you're good to go like i said this is already halfway to a pina colada so and pina coladas are a definitely uh a drink to have in the summer it is it is it's basically the summer drink me personally leave put in the comments what do you consider the summer drink leave it right down there but the the malibu rum with pineapple juice super simple super tasty very refreshing uh with some mice in there it will cool you right off and uh now that that's uh all done and said let's move right on i'm gonna take a wild guess on this one this by the looks of it there's coffee beans on this one i see coffee beans and what i can only assume is going to be a uh, coffee flavored liqueur let's see if i'm right first off the name of this of this thing is was one of those badass sounding drinks this one's called the brave bull so definitely I'm gonna try one of these. So the Brave Bull co consists of uh, it's it's like the black uh, Russian that we mentioned earlier, except this one consists of tequila with Kahlua. So I was right about the the coffee liqueur. So Kahlua and tequila. Uh, it definitely sounds gnarly. The name sounds gnarly, which hence I will try this for damn sure uh does not very well yeah i mean if you're a big coffee person you are you probably like this if uh for those of you who are not familiar with Kahlua, it is coffee flavored v extremely coffee flavored uh if you are into coffee uh this will probably be something you will be very uh, interested in trying uh tequila lovers most definitely this is where the coffee lovers and tequila drinkers uh unite together and make a uh, a brave drink. I, there, I said it. But enough of that. Let's move on to the next one. The name of this one is no stranger to me. Uh, I know this uh, name. This uh, it's not. It's not. It's a. It's a raspa. It's. It's like a iced beverage. Uh, or whatever. Uh, I know this name because I know that this the the version that I know consists of. Uh, lime juice ice with a little bit of salt or a lot of salt however you uh, prefer but let's see if i'm right so first off the name the name of the drink is paloma and i'm not very far off but not really i i was a little off uh the one i'm thinking of is the kid version uh this is the adult version this one consists of grapefruit soda and white tequila the reason i'm so familiar with the with the name is because the it is a spanish word and this drink is actually very uh mexican-y kind of uh drink so very familiar with the name uh i don't think i've had this version i've i i know there's more than one if i'm not mistaken leave it in the comments is there more than one version of a paloma mine is the raspa version this one definitely in there with the summer drinks definitely one uh that my fellow Laredo wins will probably uh, enjoy having now and again. Put in the comments if you guys are watching from Laredo. And I'll move on to the next. This one here is called the Fireball and Apple Cider. Already in the name. The Fireball is the Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey, which uh, we all know and love. And uh, just make sure it's the real one. Uh, I'll, if I remember, I will put I will put the 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 video I did of the the fraud fireball again. Make sure it says uh, whiskey on it, not cinnamon whiskey. So it's fireball cinnamon whiskey with some apple cider. Now, or, original apple cider 
it has a bit of a, has a bit of a smell that I'm not very um, I don't like very much. But I mean, I'm sure that the cinnamon uh, fireball does kind of take over, and I assume that you you know it drowns out the apple cider smell. Uh, I like how it's presented here in the picture with a cinnamon stick, not for aestheticness. When I can only assume to help uh, drown out more of the apple cider, because uh, I'm not a fan of again how apple cider smells. But uh, that's that's what this drink consists of: some fireball whiskey and some apple cider. I mean, I will I will try it just to say that I've tried it. Will I like it? Who knows? Uh, it does look uh, uh, seasonal, and I'm not just saying that because of the background that it's got here it's got like a pine tree and, and uh what looks like an apple possibly an ornament i'm not sure but it does it, it looks all right again I'll, i'd try things just to try it you can't say you don't like something unless you've tried it that's what i say now let's move on to the next one this one here is a must for me to try and for the reason that it's under the name gibson gibson being the gibson guitars which i have so now i gotta try a Gibson just to say that I've drank in a Gibson and now let's find out what it actually consists of so the two ingredients in a Gibson are pretty similar to a uh, martini now the only difference between a martini and a Gibson is as follows the martini consists of vermouth and gin now the Gibson here consists of gin and dry vermouth and how I've, I've been saying that I'm not a huge fan of dry uh, flavored not flavored but dried just drinks uh so uh i am still going to try this just because of the name only reason should that be the right reason to try a drink i don't know L let me know in the comments will you try something that just because it sounds badass even though it sounds like something that you probably not like leave it right down below are you one of those people apparently i am let's move on to the next oh the amount of times that i've heard this being ordered and asked for and uh y'all it's it's in it's in it's right there it's a jack and coke this one is my least favorite i don't like putting coke in my jack or any of my uh bourbons or whatnot i've never been a fan of how it tastes nor have i ever been a fan of uh tainting some uh some uh whiskey and or bourbon but i know that this is something that again that is that is ordered and asked for a lot so i know uh, a lot of people that enjoy having this uh to mix together uh i'm not one of them but i know i know a lot of a lot of you guys do so uh there's that i'm not not much to say it's jack and cook good old jack and coke and let's move on this one here is under ginger ale highball and ginger ale right out the back uh highball let's find out what the highball is so the highball part is a irish slash english uh whiskey so had to cut in here guys to tell you that i I messed up pretty bad on this part. I misread this so bad. So what it actually said was you can either use English whiskey and or Irish whiskey. So sorry about that. At this point of the video, it it, it, it was very long. So I was getting a little, was getting a little angsty. Sorry about that. But what do you say? Let's get back to the video. So apparently this drink was crafted back in the 1890s. This is one of those... Uh, old drinks that again if, if it were able to talk it would tell you some it would tell you some shit as well um another cool thing about this drink is uh if you don't have any of that uh uh highball whiskey or the irish english whiskey you can uh, also substitute it for a bourbon rye whiskey which i am a fan of rye whiskey so uh, that's pretty awesome so it's awesome that you're able to actually make a substitution and not go very far off but uh i mean i'm sure you can use any whiskey with this uh, and just put in some of that uh, ginger in there as well with some ice and like in the picture uh throw in a lime for a little bit of zest and aestheticness of course and now that moving on to the next now this fancy song bitch is called the jean harlow the jean harlow consists of rum and sweet vermouth now we've been mentioning vermouth like about like three four times already and i i myself don't think i've tried vermouth but like i've also said i'm pretty bad at names but uh 
uh, once I get uh, a glimpse of what Vermouth actually is, I'll probably go like, oh, it's that thing. So apparently this drink should be drank responsibly for the reason that it's uh, it's very smooth tasting and it overshadows its strong uh, kick that it has. So uh, this is definitely one of those drinks that I would look into just because of that. Sounds dangerous, sounds pretty worth my time and just sounds delicious really. I'm a, I'm a fan of rum. Uh, I like sweet vermouth. Again, I have to refresh my memory on that. So yeah, I, I would have it. I'll try it. And next, the name of this next one, it, it sounds like a Pokemon or some sort of X-Men. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Uh, the name of this drink is Kalimatsko or Kalimaxo. It's like I said, it sounds like a it sounds like a fucking X-Men. Also goes by a Spanish ka kali ka Kalimatsu. Kalimaxo. Again, sorry about that. The ingredients, the two ingredients to make this Kalimatsu Kalimaxo is as follows: red wine and Coca-Cola. Who would have would've known, right? You clever Spanish people and making these kind of drinks delicious sounding drinks up uh yeah i'm like i said uh, i'm not a big uh coke drinker but uh it 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 does sound interesting then again a lot of these drinks sound interesting and when it comes to any kind of drinks if i have never tried it i gotta just i gotta take a sip or try it once to say that i've tried it again you can't say you don't like it if you haven't tried it moving on one of those badass sounding drinks this one goes by the name snake bite this is uh two not not only is it badass sounding it's also awesome looking and also i know how to uh what it takes to make that uh that two level of of uh a la of a lager and a, and a and a porter what i can only assume is a porter even though it's not it's not it's not a porter what is actually in this drink is uh apple cider and uh lager dark lager of course so the way to get that uh half and half look you gotta pour in uh the the apple cider first and then you gotta really pour in the the dark lager <laughs> too fast of a pour will completely not stay at that layer that you want and uh too slow well actually no it the, the key is slow. You don't want to pour it fast. I've tried half and halves before, but not this one in particular, the snake bite. And now it's a must on my list as well. Just I, I go for it because of how it looks. Uh, I've had uh, I've done a uh, dark side of the moon which I've also done a video of. Uh, I will probably place that right down there as well. I don't know how far along we are in, in, in this list, guys, but uh, if you're have, if you still watching, you're still stuck around, uh, leave in the comments which one of these drinks are looking good for so far for you. And now uh, let's move on. This one here is under Gar Garibaldi. Garibaldi. This is, again, one of those drinks that looks like, again, something you will have with breakfast. Uh, the This uh, here, uh, Gar Gar Garibaldi. Garibaldi. Again, sorry about that. So this drink consists of uh, Campari and orange juice. And for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Campari, I will go ahead and leave a clip somewhere here so you guys can uh, know the better of what is it we're talking about but yeah the presentation on this one also very nice uh again it's uh it looks it looks like oj something you'll have with your goddamn waffles in the morning uh it also looks very summery very summery looking also the, the way that it's presented much much a lot a lot of summer just thrown in there a lot of summer everything summer everything moving on if your lucky number is seven then you will definitely like this one this one's called a seven and seven now let's find out why so this thing consists of seven up and segram seven crown blended whiskey so hence the name seven seven so this all right the 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 ingredients to this make the name and this is one of those very specific ingredients so it's got to be the seven up and the uh segram's seven ground blended whiskey so uh i like the combination lemony and whiskey i'm a whiskey guy and the way that is presented here it looks it looks nice it looks neat it looks crisp it looks refreshing once again this will be something that i would try uh, once again i'm a whiskey guy so this will be on the list as well uh i got a lot of stuff i gotta look into this is what's cool about this niche it's never ending there's always something new to try man you know what i'm saying 
let's move on in this picture they didn't they didn't do very well in showing the the drink but it does show the bottle of saint uh germain uh i actually do have one of these bottles laying around uh somewhere uh this one is called the cocktail mix is a saint germain champagne cocktail so it's it's in the name it's in the picture the, the saint germain uh bottle uh liquor with a, a couple of ounces uh three and a half ounces to be precise of champagne uh, and this one it does not specify uh, what kind of champagne but knowing that the the saint germain uh elder flower it's once again it's in the name if you ever ever tried the saint germain it it's definitely very herbally very florally it's more of uh to give a some a fancy flavor if you will now that uh floral uh grassy uh earthy uh flavor combined with a refreshing crispy champagne it i can definitely see this being a very fancy uh summer ish kind of drink but now that i know that i i have this well i know i have this uh i might have some champagne later on as well so this is something that i could also try just today if I want to but enough of that let's move right on this uh very also fancy looking uh drink that you see here is called the tequila soda I I don't even have to explain myself it's a tequila and by the looks of it white tequila with uh some club soda plain and simple throw in some limes like the way it's presented here uh it's it's still got the little where I can only assume is the stirring uh tool we'll call it this tool just to just for the picture they only did this, they only did this for the picture guys don't don't even, don't even worry about that but yes the tequila soda pretty simple straight to the point it's in the name i think we can move along now shall we this one here is under the name vermouth and soda vermouth again we we've, we've brought up uh in the in the other drinks that we mentioned this is just plain simple vermouth doesn't say anything about being dry or anything so it's simple uh, vermouth with uh soda it also says to give it a little bit more dimension you can use an orange peel uh to garnish it and to help uh out with the flavors as far as taste wise this uh gives off uh some spicy woodsy uh bittery taste uh so it's somewhere along the lines of a whiskey bourbon kind of uh, flavor and uh again if you want to give it a, a nice little bit of a of zest throw in that uh, orange peel to garnish and again give it a little bit more flavor uh the way this thing is presented is pretty freaking sick um i am a whiskey guy i like what the whiskey and bourbons uh flavors carry so this is again one of the ones i will try uh leave in the comments is this is this your cup of tea or cup of whiskey what whatever this one here is called a b n b let's see why that's me B. So the B and B stands for a brandy and Benedictine liquor. Not a hundred percent sure on the brandy, but I will go ahead and leave a clip or picture somewhere here so we both can have a better understanding. And uh, as well as the Benedictine liquor, I don't think I've ever even seen one of those before. So I'll put it up here as well. But what this drink is supposed to give off is a sweet and spicy taste as well as herbal notes in there as well. Again, these flavors kind of also remind me of a whiskey, which I am a fan of. So um, there's that. So leave a note in the comments. Does a B and B sound badass to you, bestie? Badass, bestie, B and B. Before we get into the name of this one, we gotta first admire the presentation of this. It looks like something out of fucking Narnia or something. So the name of this one is called a Slow Royale. S O S L O E. Slow Royale. So this Slow Royale consists of a uh, gin and sparkling wine the two combinations of this drink sound pretty crazy it sounds pretty gnarly a uh, gin on its own not too crazy about it and uh wine i guess it depends on what kind of wine it doesn't specify if it's dry or a uh, sweet wine uh so because it doesn't mention that i'm gonna go and safely say you can use either or depending on uh your liking so either uh dry or sweet wine with a uh, gin my suggestion sweet wine because like again gin 
with dry red wine mm -mm, no sir i think we're almost done with this uh with this list here uh, let me know if you guys are still sticking around and if what you're uh think is pretty enjoyable to drink so far this one here is called the black velvet and it goes by the color and let's see what's uh what's so black and velvety about it get a load of this one this one consists of guinness and fine champagne this is going to be one that is going to be drinking very soon as soon as i get the ingredients i have tried this uh guinness mixture i think it was like with guinness with the guinness with uh i think it was like cranberry juice or some shit that was uh that was okay it gave it a little sweetness but now with champagne damn we're that's a fancy guinness right there now let's move on to the next to all my laredo wins out there you all know just by looking at this one which we're looking at here is the chilada and the chilada and here when it comes to uh, a Mexican chilada, because I know this is uh, also something that uh, the British uh, came up with, and I believe they called it the beer tails, the British beer tail, or something like that. But for my fellow Laredoans, we all know this one to be the uh, Mexican chilada when it consists of Mexican beer, of uh, your favorite type of Mexican beer, with lime juice. And I know some of us throw in the extra salt in there, and uh, yeah. This one's no stranger to when it comes to where I'm from, Laredo, Texas. So uh, again, if anybody from Laredo is watching, y'all know what this is. And that concludes the 40 cocktail drinks with only two ingredients. It was a pretty long one. <laughs> That's what she... <clears throat> but anyways, yeah, uh, thanks. Thank you guys for joining in. And if you did stick around for this entire video... Uh, please go ahead and uh, hit that like button right down there. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. If you are a fan of any of the cocktails we just mentioned or any uh, beer of any kind and or movie or food reviews because that is exactly what this channel is about. The finer things in life, the things that just make life just great. And also put it in the comments, which one of these 40 drinks are you guys gonna be trying or which ones have you tried and uh, which ones was just like something just worth, just worth it. Leave it in the comment. Let me know what you guys thought about this video. And uh, that's it for that guys. And as always, you know how this goes. If you keep watching, I'm going to keep drinking. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.